How's it going everyone? This is Victory1140 from Gentlemen with Controllers, and that moment is finally here. One of the most anticipated games of the fall 2012 releases has finally come. That's right, Assassin's Creed 3 has been released for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and the PC. And we here at Gentlemen with Controllers are here to bring you a first look at it. Now this is the fifth installment of the Assassin's Creed series. It was announced right off the bat when Assassin's Creed 1 came out that it was going to be a trilogy, but in addition to these three games, they also released Brotherhood and Revelations as well. The game starts out by giving you a little background as to what's happened so far. You're playing as Desmond Miles, who is using the Animus to live out the lives of his ancestors. It gives you a little background as to who he played as in the first game, which was Altair, and who he played the second game, which was Ezio. You would have to play the first two games, and then Brotherhood and Revelations as well, to get the full story. The game kind of assumes you've played the first ones, which is why everything is so brief in the beginning. Now, I personally haven't played Revelations at all. I played Brotherhood, but I never really came close to beating it. So my first impressions of this game are going to be comparing it to the first and second games. His name is Desmond Miles, and he has brought us to the end. So I think the combat is much improved from the first two games that I've played. It flows a lot more fluidly than it has before. In previous games, the combat system pretty much boiled down to waiting for someone to attack you and then pressing the B button to counter that attack. And while you can still play this game this way, it seems a lot better. You can actually pummel away at enemies and get kills off of it, rather than only playing a wait to counter type strategy. It just seems a lot better. Um, I believe this is probably my favorite uh, combat system out of any of the games so far. So there are a couple of things that bug me about the game so far. One of those is that there's quite a few points, especially in the beginning of the game, where it will take you out of a cutscene, let you interact for a brief period of time, and then put you right back into a cutscene. So what'll happen is you will get brought out of a cutscene, out of an introduction or something to that effect, You'll take a few steps forward, walk about five feet, it'll fade to white or fade to black, and you'll go right back into another cutscene. To me, it's basically like a quick time event. It's more reminiscent of a point and click type game or something like that. And I understand why they did it. It would have been very boring if it was just one long drawn out cutscene with no player interaction. I can see that. But they could have done it in a much better way. For example, later on in the game, you'll have a character that's walking and talking with you outside of a cutscene, rather than putting it into a cutscene. To me, that's the way to do it. Don't take me out of one cutscene to put me right back into another one three seconds later. It really, to me, breaks the flow of the game, and it just doesn't feel right. So there are some points in the game where it seems like there's a lack of instructions as to what to do. For example, there's one mission where you need to free some captives. And during this mission, there's an optional objective to get three stealth corner kills. Now that's how the game phrases it. The problem is, it never actually mentions what this special kind of kill is. It doesn't mention it's just a stealth kill, it mentions it's a stealth corner kill. Now, I mean, you can try to assume what it is, and you'll probably figure it out eventually, but it's just the fact that they don't mention this or any other really type of special kill. There is a mention of aerial kills, and that gets its own part in the tutorial level when you first start out the game. So, I guess it just kind of makes me wonder why that's not in here as well. That's just a small example, though. Another example of this is later on in the same mission. So you have to free the last group of captives, and there are two guards on this boat. One is stationary, and the other is patrolling. So, let me walk you through my thought process behind this. Okay, so the one guard doesn't move, but the other one always comes back. If I kill the stationary guard, the patrolling guard will see the body, and I'll be detected, and I'm gonna lose. Well, I'm on the side of a ship here, and I see the game gives me a whistle option. I wonder if I just whistle, I can lure the guard over here and maybe throw him overboard? Oh, uh, no, no, he just detects me right away and I lose. It just confuses me why that was thrown in there. I mean, wouldn't you think that would be the thought process in an assassin's head? Trying to plan out the escape, trying to plan out the actual assassination? No, not in this case. Now what you're actually supposed to do is wait for the patrolling guard to walk away, 
you walk up behind the stationary guard, you kill him, you free the captives, and then the mission's over. How was I supposed to know the mission was going to end right away? Again, I'm trying to plan out my moves, trying to think it through realistically here, trying to make sure that I don't leave any loose ends, throw the body overboard so it's not found. Nope, it just unrealistically ends the mission, and you have no idea what happened to the other guard that finds the body. It's just... It takes you out of the game just a little bit. It seems really unrealistic that they would do it that way. Now, one thing I thought I'd throw in here for the heck of it is a hilarious glitch that I ran into during the same mission I've been talking about. Now, the patrolling guard in this case decided he was going to do the moonwalk on the side of the ship. It, it was one of the funniest things I've seen in the game so far. The only downside is he was looking right at the stationary guard, which meant I couldn't kill him without getting caught, so I actually couldn't complete the mission on that try. But it was still freaking hilarious. For the good of well, our soul. that was interesting. Now, Assassin's Creed 3 looks absolutely stunning. I'm playing on the Xbox 360, so I can really only imagine how much better it has to look on the PC. The viewpoints from the original Assassin's Creed games are still in here, and they give a very good testament as to what the game can do with graphics on a large scale. And I think it's one of Assassin's Creed's biggest strengths. It always has been, and it looks like with this game, it continues to be. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, this really isn't meant to be a review. This is more of just a first look. Um, it's my first impressions with the game after I've played it for a few hours, so I'm not by any means giving it a full review. But what I can say is that I am really enjoying it. I will continue playing it, and hopefully will keep enjoying it. But I hope this has helped give you an idea of what the game is like, and what to expect, and just anything like that. So, I'm Victory1140 from Gentlemen with Controllers, and this has been a first look at Assassin's Creed 3. Thanks for watching.